I'm going to uh, tell you about a package that was developed in my group. It's called z 2 pack and it's uh, based on the comput com computation of uh, uh, hybrid Warnier charge centers. And this computation will allow you... So uh, b the whole point is that uh, we, we work on the uh, band theory. We have a sing single particle Hamiltonian, and with this single particle Hamiltonian, the usual approach was always to compute the eigenvalues of energies. And when we compute the eigenvalues of energies, that gave us uh, the possibility to classify materials into either insulators or uh, metals by just uh, either we have a band gap or not. It's, uh, of course, a very rough interpretation of what was uh, done. But now with topological band theory, the main difference is that we uh, concentrate our attention more on the uh, eigenstates of the Hamiltonian and uh, from these eigenstates we can derive a special type of quantum number that is called the topological invariant. Once we have the topological invariant we can uh, say whether a material, materials uh, that we consider are classified further and in particular if we uh, consider insulators then a topological invariant can tell us that, uh, if, uh, for example, uh, for bismuth selenide, it's completely insulated in the bulk, but on the surface, it doesn't matter which surface you uh, look at, you will always have a, a, a surface uh, metallic state called uh, a Dirac cone on the surface. And uh, the same is also true for metals, because if we have in a metal uh, some band degeneracy located close to the from a level, then this means that the excitations in, in these materials um, uh, are topologically protected and they can also realize a bunch of interesting uh, physical phenomena, usually also associated with some uh, Dirac type or wild type physics. And the, uh, the, the whole point is that uh, all these materials pr uh, have a, a big promise for uh, future quantum technologies, and in particular, uh, experiments already observed that um, uh, novel transport properties uh, in these materials are ubi ubiquitous. And uh, yeah, somehow it doesn't work. So in order to, to be able to um, compute this topological invariance for any given material, we need to introduce uh, uh, some new approach. And uh, here we concentrate on uh, the introduction of hybrid one-year functions. What does it mean? This means that uh, imagine we have, uh, we consider a three-dimensional problem, and then we, we have a block state as a function of kx, ky, kz. And what I want to do, I want to uh, do the Fourier transform only in one direction, only in x, for example. And once I do that, then I have uh, kind of one-dimensional one-year functions, but they are uh, uh, the uh, positions of their centers now depend on ky and kz. So uh, if we look at in 1D, then uh, the, uh, from block state behavior, we go to a one-year-like behavior in one direction, but it's still block-like in the other two directions. And uh, the whole idea of z 2 pack is basically to track the behavior of this hybrid one-year centers and, uh, and because uh, once we look at this hybrid one-year centers and how they move uh, as a function of momentum, we can understand whether the charge can be pumped through uh, an insulating bulk. And uh, with this, let me give you a first example, which is familiar to most of you, that of a, a, a electronic polarization of a one-dimensional insulator. And uh, over here, we know that up to a, a factor that I dropped, uh, we, we compute the electronic contribution to polarization by just considering all the one-year centers of um, the occupied bands and then s sum them up. And this gives us the electronic contribution to polarization. And uh, it is important to note that uh, uh, it's a, a, a theorem by Kohn that in 1D, doesn't matter what uh, band we consider, we can always construct an exponential localized uh, one year function. This means that if we consider hybrid one year functions, this one dimensional part of it that is one year like is always exponential localized. And uh, now let, uh, let me go further and uh, consider the two dimensional case. 
uh, of a churn number, which is one of the topological invariants that characterizes insulators that exhibit uh, integer quantum hole effect on the edges. So in the bulk, it's a perfect insulator. Once we consider a semi-infinite system, it, will, it is guaranteed to have a, an edge state, and this edge state is exactly the integer quantum hole effect state. And uh, <coughs> basically, the, uh, these materials need to break time reversal symmetry, and if we look at a two-dimensional brilliant zone, then uh, now I, I construct this hybrid uh, Bonnier functions, and then I can look at the, the traces uh, uh, how the center moves in the x direction uh, as a function of uh, momentum in the y direction. And then uh, what can happen is, for example, uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the center doesn't uh, jump at all. Of course, everything is periodic. Then in this case, uh, uh, we have no, ch no churn number, but if it jumps by one, or say two, or any integer number of steps, then we say that the uh, and shown number is non-zero, and we actually have a material that realizes integer quantum Hall effect. And then uh, it's convenient to think of this picture as uh, using the periodic boundary conditions, because then the one, what the one center does, it just uh, leaves a trace, either winds around the cylinder or doesn't. And then uh, you can see from the one, this 1D perspective, that we can actually uh, say that the churn number is equal exactly to the difference in the 1D polarizations uh, computed for ky equals to pi and ky equals to zero. However, this formula got to be uh, taken with care because in order to use this formula and avoid all the phase jumps possible in between, we got to make sure that uh, we choose the block state in such a way that it continuously connects 2 pi uh, and 0 as a function of ky. Once uh, this is reached, we can uh, use this formula. And uh, now, uh, how z 2 pack is uh, constructed, the whole point is that we always try to find the churn numbers hidden somewhere. And uh, in most cases, in many, very many cases of topological uh, materials, uh, the total churn number is equal to 0. But there are some hidden churn numbers that uh, are not visible right away. In order to, to track them down, I, we uh, consider the uh, occupied Hilbert space, and it's always can, uh, it usually can be split into uh, subspaces which are related by symmetries. And now P stands for a project onto the subspaces of the occupied Hilbert space, and, uh, and there, the, the, these are symmetry constraints that are put on these uh, subspaces. And then the churn number can still be computed as a basically integral of the Berry uh, curvature. Uh, that, uh, and this Berry curvature comes from this subspace of the occupied states. And then what uh, uh, we, we can compute this uh, small individual churn numbers that come from uh, each, uh, if from the bands of the subspaces. And uh, the total churn number will be given as their sum. Uh, and uh, just to give you a basic example, when the total churn number is zero, but the individual churn numbers uh, actually reveal topological nature, we can consider the basic time reversal symmetric Z2 insulators that made uh, the whole buzz in the, uh, in the community. And uh, basically over here, what happens if we consider a two-dimensional case, we know that uh, time reversal with spin squares to minus one and for this reason, all the states come uh, in uh, Kramers pairs. And uh, for that reason, for each of the Kramers pairs uh, we, uh, state, we can define a churn number. It's, uh, it's pretty complicated to do on a, on a lattice, but it's doable. And the whole point is that then we find that uh, uh, these churn numbers for states of the Kramers pairs, uh, for the topological phase, they got to be odd if they even uh, the phase is trivial. And, uh, but the total churn number is zero. And what uh, you see typically is that uh, on the edge state of such a system, you have a combination of two uh, integer quantum hole effects, but uh, they, st they, they have opposite signs and uh, quantum propagating states as a result. And over here, due to symmetry, it's very important uh, to put uh, symmetry constraints on the hybrid one centers, because for example, uh, with time reversal symmetry, instead of doing, as I said, a complicated uh, 
calculation on the uh, on the mesh with uh, changing the gauge of the block state, we can uh, just look at the uh, traces and then use the fact that uh, uh, time reversal maps one part of uh, K, KY onto another part of KY and just look what happens uh, if we go from zero to pi in KY and look at the uh, two uh, mm, charge, uh, one charge cent center uh, traces left in this half and uh, the point if, if they zigzag then we are guaranteed that we are in the topological phase. And if we relax this uh, symmetry of uh, both of the block states being uh, related by time reversal symmetry, then we lose this picture. So now uh, let me give further illustration. Another uh, well-known example of topological uh, insulators is those of uh, crystalline topological insulators, and in particular those that are protected by mirror symmetry. And in mirror symmetric uh, cases, the famous example is that of tin telluride. If we look at tin telluride, there is a mirror plane uh, designated over here, but if we compute all the uh, uh, <coughs> uh, hybrid uh, Wonia centers, then the picture doesn't tell us anything because basically the total Chern number is zero. And now if we actually involve the idea about the symmetry on this uh, plane, we can uh, identify uh, subspaces of the occupied, in the occupied space which belong to different uh, eigenvalues of the mirror, mirror uh, symmetry and we can see that for uh, different eigenvalues we have individual Chern numbers plus and minus two. And in order to do such calculations we developed uh, another algorithm that allows you to construct uh, uh, one year functions and uh, make them completely symmetrized. So it, uh, this symmetrization will include uh, uh, non symorphic symmetries and time reversal symmetry. So it goes beyond to what is uh, implemented at, at the moment in, uh, in 1 year 90. So uh, with this uh, picture, let me give you some motivation. There are still some predicted uh, uh, crystal and topological insulators, in particular, this C4 topological insulators for which only tight binding models exist and uh, no real material is uh, predicted. But over here, the whole point is that, again, we want to, uh, to identify individual Chern numbers uh, for uh, C4 symmetry. And for that reason, we got to trace this, uh, the behavior of the charge centers along the C4 symmetric path in the Brillouin zone. And again, the total Chern number is zero, but the individual Chern numbers are plus minus one, meaning that on some surfaces of uh, such a material, we will have uh, direct surface states. Uh, now, uh, let me, I'm almost out of time, but I will quickly go through this. If we consider uh, metals, then in metals, uh, uh, as I said, uh, the point of interest is uh, degeneracy located close to the uh, thermal level. And uh, it turns out to be possible, again, to define a certain uh, uh, <coughs> manifold and case space on which uh, the band structure is insulated and then if for the insulator the churn uh, number just meant the flux or berry curvature through the brilliant zone, which is a torus, over here we will be, be considering a sphere. And again, I will just show you how churn numbers and Z2 numbers can be represented in, uh, in metallic systems. So for example, uh, the most simple uh, band crossing that we can imagine is a linear crossing of two bands, which would be described by such a Hamiltonian in general, and if you, you can see, if we uh, assume that V is equal to zero, then we end up with a uh, uh, relativistic uh, while fermion uh, equation. Uh, and then uh, the, the Hamiltonians uh, that, or materials that host such points are now called while semi-metals, attracted a lot of attention. But if we uh, say that this V is larger than one, then uh, the while point appears on the boundary between electron and hole pockets and uh, ch significantly changes the properties of a material. And uh, over here, in order to identify this uh, insulate and, uh, um, space in, in the brilliant zone, we basically put a sphere in momentum space on top of the, of the degeneracy point, and then on this sphere, all bands are gapped. And for that reason, again, we can compute the flux of the very curvature through the surface. And over, uh, in this uh, illustrated cases, basically, you can always see that, uh, again, we have uh, uh, a churn number which tells us the chirality of this while point. It's either 
plus one or minus one. And uh, in order to give you an example of uh, how Z2 comes in, uh, uh, we can consider the example of Dirac uh, semi-metals such as cadmium arsenide, for example. For this material, PT uh, uh, inversion times time reversal has to be a symmetry of the problem. And then uh, this uh, symmetry brings together, just like in the case of a uh, Z2 topological insulate, it brings together two forms. So for example, we can form a Dirac uh, point, which is a, dege a degeneracy of uh, four linear dispersion bands by just uh, combining two wild points. And then uh, this can be seen again uh, from Z to PAC as a uh, winding of uh, uh, occupied uh, of the uh, hybrid one year centers of the occupied states. And with, with this, I would like to conclude just saying that uh, we developed, uh, actually by we, I mean my student, PhD student, uh, Dominic Gresh. He developed uh, this code, z 2 uh, available over here. And you can, with this code, you can do, first, uh, given a material, you can identify what's the topology. And if you find something new, you identify the completely new topological phase. You can easily do high throughput search. and. Uh, Initially, when we just started working on the project, we used Abinit, and then because from Abinit, I knew how to e extract the uh, overlap matrices because uh, all these hybrid one-year centers are constructed by taking the uh, um, parallel transport gauge, and that parallel transport gauge, we, uh, which is used in one-year 90, we just take the uh, overlap matrices out of it, and then uh, z 2 pack takes them into account and computes the topological invariant. So basically, it's a ready-to-use package, and I think it's already fixed to, for the use with uh, Abinit, with no problem. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>